Good evening, you're welcome. Tonight at nine. Short-lived celebrations for Donald Trump. He's back in court for second defamation case after chalking up thumping victory in Iowa. Man charged with the murder of his mother. The body of Angela Canavan was found in her Sligo town home last May. More than 600 recently arrived asylum seekers without state-provided accommodation as Tisha concedes supports for host communities must be strengthened. And what's in a name? A lot, it seems, as debt-ridden Parky Chiv is set to be rebranded with the name of supermarket chain. It wouldn't be in favour if it was, I suppose, money talks. <laughs> I do hope they keep the, the queef, but we'll see. Donald Trump had little opportunity to bask in the glow of his resounding Iowa caucus victory as he was back in a New York city fighting another defamation case. The first battle of the Republican nomination process sweep up 51% of the votes, beating Maine rivals Florida Governor Ron DeSantis Ambassador Nikki Haley. The race now moves to New Hampshire, where the polls suggest very little separates Mr. Trump and Nikki Haley. Last night, it was a coronation. We want to thank the great people of Iowa. Thank you. We love you all. Today, it's a courtroom. Trump turning up in New York, where he's being sued for defamation by writer E. Jean Carroll. Last year, she won a $5 million civil action against Trump for sexual assault. It's a demeaning kind of a thing, and that's what they want to do. It's called election interference. And yeah, I'm going to go to it, and I'm going to explain. I don't know who the hell she is. There's no reason for Trump to be in court today, but the cases against him are helping to mobilize the Republican Party base to support him in selection contests like last night's Iowa caucus. Every time they indict him, uh, his popularity goes up. Um, I mean, I think... Most of the Democrats know the truth now, you know. And if we don't stand up and fight against all these fake indictments and all this stuff, then they're going to do it to the next person. Meanwhile, the campaigns have moved on. Ron DeSantis, the runner-up last night, to South Carolina this morning, while the former governor of South Carolina, Nikki Haley, is on the ground in New Hampshire, where they vote next Tuesday. You guys want me to hate Trump. Some people want me to love Trump. I don't hate or love him. I call it out like I see it. And when I see something wrong, I say it. I've said I don't think he needs to be the next president. I'm going to be the next president. Iowa has done its job as a sorting house for aspiring presidential candidates. The race has already moved on. Well, Sean joins us now. He's all wrapped up in Des Moines, Iowa. Sean, Donald Trump, clearly where he likes to be, the centre of attention and grabbing all those headlines. Yes, he is, Sharon, grabbing the headlines. As you say, there was no reason for him in New York today. They were just selecting a jury this morning uh, in the case. Uh, he sat in the courtroom behind G. L Magazine. A jury last year uh, found that he uh, did sexually assault Jean Carroll in a changing room of a New York department store back in the 90s, awarded him $5 million for that. Even before that case started, he had made disparaging comments about Jean Carroll, and that's what she is suing him on uh, right now. The judge uh, the jury in that case had found in her favour previously, so this hearing is simply to set an amount of monetary compensation. Jean Carroll is looking for $10 million. The judge in instructing the jury when they finally selected them. We're not relitigating this case. This is simply about finding how much money Donald Trump should pay in compensation for defaming Gene Carroll. Now, Donald Trump didn't wait around for the opening statements. He's left the court building in New York. He's on his way to New Hampshire to do a bit of actual campaigning on the ground. But you know what? He's winning the publicity battle because uh, the networks here have been wall-to-wall -wall Donald Trump in New York. But as you heard from the clips in that report last night, the Republican base are very mobilized 
by all of these court cases against Donald Trump. They are buying this argument that he is making that every time he is attacked, they are attacked. And so by backing him, uh, people who support uh, him are pushing back against all of the establishment and all of the, the bad things that come with that inflation or whatever that people don't like. So Trump is making himself a focus for discontent and the discontented are getting in behind him. But remember, those discontented so far are only a very, very narrow section of the population, uh, certainly here in Iowa and the broader Republican Party, the people who turn out to vote in these primary elections, not fully representative of the nation as a whole. So when it gets to the proper election, uh, we'll see the situation might be different and might be different if Trump is actually convicted in any of the criminal cases. But the more pushback that's done by the electorates uh, here and in other primary cases, the more risky it becomes for the federal government and for state prosecutors to keep pushing ahead uh, with the indictments that are out there now and perhaps even seeking new indictments against Trump because in terms of the popular uh, popularity, it just doesn't seem to be working in his favour. OK. Sean, thank you. A 38-year-old man has appeared in court charged with the murder of his mother. The body of Angela Canavan, who was in her 50s, was found at her home in Sligo Town last May. Nigel Canavan was remanded in custody after appearing at Carrick on Shannon District Court. Angela Canavan's body was discovered at her home at St John's Terrace in Sligo on May 1st last year. Investigating Gardaí had previously arrested a man on suspicion of her murder. He was later released without charge. Today, Miss Canavan's son appeared before Judge Michael Canellan in court in Leitrim charged with her murder. Nigel Canavan, aged 38, with an address at 16 Eris Gardens, Eris Street, Cross Molina, County Mayo, appeared before Carrick and Shannon District Court this morning. Giving evidence in court, Detective Garda Eamon MacDonald said Mr Canavan was arrested at Eris Gardens at 4pm yesterday afternoon and was subsequently taken to Sligo Garda Station where he was charged and cautioned. Detective MacDonald said when the charge was put to the accused, Mr Canavan replied that he was not guilty. Inspector Melissa Martin made an application to remand Nigel Canavan in custody to Castlereagh Prison. Mr Canavan did not address the court during this morning's hearing. His solicitor, John Anderson, applied for legal aid, which was granted by Judge Canellan. Nigel Canavan was remanded in custody. He's due to appear again via video link at Sligo District Court on Thursday, the 18th of January. Gail Conway, RT News, Carrick and Shannon, County Leitrim. The UN Agency for Refugees has expressed its deep concern over the number of unaccompanied asylum, sorry, unaccommodated asylum seekers in Ireland. The figure has now surpassed 600. The agency says the government has a moral and legal obligation to meet people's basic needs. Earlier, the Taoiseach said more needs to be done to address the concerns of communities being asked to accommodate increasing numbers of international protection applicants. A grim milestone this evening, news that there are now 601 international protection applicants without state-provided accommodation, many sleeping on the streets. The UN Refugee Agency in Ireland says it is deeply concerned. It says sleeping on the streets is not safe and we cannot allow this to become normalised. It adds that this is an emergency situation which requires the government to take extraordinary measures to meet basic humanitarian needs. Meanwhile, the Taoiseach today acknowledged that people do have genuine concerns about overburdening local services and that communities need stronger backing. So we've done that to a certain extent already with the Community Recognition Fund, but I think we need to do more uh, to help out, to increase resources around health, around education, around policing, to respond to genuine concerns that people have. Tonight in Ross Cray County Tipperary, a protest is continuing. After 17 family members out of a planned 160 asylum seekers were brought into a former hotel. Those protesting say they were horrified by scenes of violence which emerged yesterday. We're broken hearted about the way we're portrayed. We're portrayed as being racist and everything that goes with it. We're not. We are just ordinary people from Ross Grey trying to look after our town and our future. Some protesters brought toys and clothes to the hotel today to help out families while the integration minister also met some local representatives. 
resources are needed in Ros Grey. And we've seen with the Taoiseach's um, response there before the Cabinet meeting today, I think we're pushing an open door as getting doors for Ros Grey. A longer term, more strategic plan for accommodating asylum seekers will go to Cabinet shortly. Let's get the very latest uh, from Sandra Hurley. She joins us now from Leinster House and it would appear the government clearly in containment mode uh, tonight, Sandra. They want to take as much heat out of this Ross Grey protest as possible and looking at elsewhere too. Yes, that's right, Sharon. A development in relation to Ross Cray tonight. Uh, it's understood that the government has agreed in principle to bring forward uh, some sort of funding mechanism to support a community hotel in Ross Cray. That proposal was uh, put forward by Jackie Cahill at his meeting with the Integration Minister, Roderick O'Gorman. The ban, it seems, would be to buy an old hotel in the town, one that has been out of use for 10 years. And certainly that would go some way to addressing some of the local concerns, but it wouldn't address all their concerns, especially around the pressure on local services. But I think what it does illustrate is that very real worry in government right now about that whole contentious issue of immigration as it is flaring up all around the country. We heard some very conciliatory language from the Tidak Lee of Radker today, very much emphasising that they are hearing the frustrations of local communities. We did hear something new. The government, he said, is now looking at ways that it can support the 10 districts across the country that have taken in the most Ukrainians and asylum seekers. However, there's very little detail on this plan. We don't know the areas. We don't know exactly what extra support that all government departments are going to be working on this. But I think once again, it, it just it, the government's bandwidth is being taken up by this whole uh, issue of immigration right now. Sandra Hurley in Leinster House, thank you. And apologies to our viewers tonight. We appear to have some blips in transmission, but uh, we are trying to get on top of those uh, gremlins. But we will continue. Activity has escalated in the Red Sea with the US striking anti-ship missiles which Houthi rebels were preparing for use. The Iran-backed group fired on another cargo ship as fears intensify that the conflict is spreading across the wider Middle East region. Meanwhile, tonight, Qatari mediators have said a deal has been reached for Israeli hostages in Gaza to receive medicines. Despite an Israeli promise to wind down operations in southern Gaza, evacuation orders rained down there today. Children played with them, unaware of their significance. Overnight, a wave of Israeli strikes killed at least 78 people. While mostly on the offensive, Israel's famed Iron Dome air defence system repelled 50 rockets fired from Gaza. Outside of war, hunger and disease stalk the Strip's near 2.5 million population. The UN says its evacuation facilities are overcrowded, with people struggling to secure food and clean water. Meanwhile, conflict has flared again in the Red Sea. The US says it carried out a new strike against four Houthi anti-ship ballistic missiles as they were being readied for more attacks. It came as the Iran-backed militants struck another vessel, a Greek cargo ship, off the coast of Yemen. Repeated Houthi attacks have seen a growing number of ships avoiding the region. Despite today's strike on the Houthis, America maintains its goal is de-escalation. Through a combination of steady deterrence and steadfast diplomacy, we seek to stop the spread of conflict and to create the conditions for de-escalation. However, with fresh attacks on both sides, there's no sign of the conflict debating anytime soon. Angus Cox, RTE News. Still to come on the 9 o'clock news, Supreme Court reserves its decision on the latest attempt by Graham Dwyer to overturn his 2015 conviction for the murder of Elaine O'Hara. And a Dublin legend hangs up his boots, boys in blues, rock, leaves the pitch after 12 memorable years. Is Bioga V er Lair Scholana Fado. Akner Hogdini Aig er on sale more.
is er intish fos gan nachte, honig fos er na leir skolene, agus er heil na nini. Tira ura annual, a tiring tartrin, agus funer vi an leir skol re dar lo. Vinyart fos le tjakt, era quinig earth eg actriakt. With Spa Range own brand products, Jim. great value is closer than you think. Spa Range, wherever you see the tree. The wind is our greatest natural resource, and we're harnessing it to provide cleaner, renewable energy for homes across the country. Switch to SSE Airtricity and get the wind working for you. Switch today and get up to 20% off your electricity. Choose one of our new smart lifestyle plans and you could save even more. Switching couldn't be easier. Simply go to sseairtricity.com. SSE Airtricity. This is Generation Green. Billy saved big when he switched to 48 Mobile. That made him feel amazing. You made a good call today, Billy. Did you? Yes, you did. <clears throat> Get all data, calls and text for only $12.99 a month. 48 Mobile. Good call. The Lotto Jackpot is an estimated 13 million euro. The National Lottery. It could be you. Enjoy full fibre broadband with speeds of 2 gig. And 99.9% .9 reliability from Ireland's best broadband. Virgin Media. It's playtime. The new online mortgage portal from PTSB will get you moving. Start your application, track your progress, and talk to us when you need us. Bringing the best of technology and our people together for a mortgage experience that works for you. PTSB. All together, more human. FBD. Doesn't stand for Federal Butterfly Department. Or flat battery doctors. Yeah, that's flat. Fixing Banjak's dishwashers. Or fierce barn damage. FBD stands for support. We're Ireland's homegrown insurer supporting over 300 community groups and initiatives across 34 branches nationwide. No wonder 9 out of 10 customers renew every year. FBD Insurance. Support. It's what we do. Moving. When did we stop doing it? When, you move, when did we tonight. settle for technology that keeps us still? Kia Electric Range, available with 1.9% APR finance. Kia, movement that inspires. And you're very welcome back. The Supreme Court has reserved its decision on the latest attempt by Graeme Dwyer to overturn his 2015 conviction for the murder of Elaine O'Hara. Dwyer lost an appeal against his conviction on all grounds last year, but the Supreme Court agreed to hear this final appeal on the basis there were significant issues of public importance about the admissibility of mobile phone data evidence. Almost exactly nine years after Graham Dwyer went on trial for the murder of 36-year-old Elaine O'Hara, her family returned to court for the latest proceedings. Her father Frank, sister Anne and brother John were in the Supreme Court for what may have been one of the final hearings on the case in the Irish courts. Part of the case against Dwyer proving that he was the man who sent a vulnerable Ms O'Hara texts ending in an instruction to go down to shore and wait before murdering her involved an analysis of mobile phone data. The Court of Justice of the EU found Dwyer's data was retained and accessed under Irish legislation which was later found to have breached EU law. 
However, the Court of Appeal found that even if the disputed mobile data evidence had been excluded from his trial, it was not very significant and there was still enough evidence to support Dwyer's conviction. Senior counsel Remy Farrell told the court the retention of Dwyer's data was a breach of his rights under the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the EU. He said the prosecution should not be permitted to deploy material and evidence that should not have been gathered in the first place. Dwyer's side also said the mobile phone evidence was in inextricably interwoven into the tapestry of the case. Lawyers for the DPP said Dwyer's rights under the Charter had not been breached and senior counsel Sean Gearan said assessing the admissibility of evidence had to strike a balance between protecting citizens' rights and bringing the administration of justice into disrepute by excluding relevant evidence. Senior counsel Amory Lawler said the call data records were not integral to the jury's guilty verdict and was a vast amount of other evidence. The seven Supreme Court judges reserved their decision on the case. There was no suggestion in the proceedings today of any further reference to Europe. They'll give their ruling at a later date. Orla O'Donnell, RTE News, the Supreme Court. Israel has come under further pressure from world leaders meeting at the World Economic Forum in the Swiss mountain resort of Davos over its continued bombardment of Gaza. The U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan told the meeting that America wanted to de-escalate the crisis in the Middle East. Just when inflation seemed to be falling, the world economy has been hit by the crisis in the Middle East, in particular the attacks on commercial shipping in the Red Sea. Despite the sunlight and crisp mountain air, more than 56% of Davos chief economists expect a weaker global economy this year. The head of IDA Ireland says that while Red Sea attacks will hit supply chains, the Irish economy should be resilient. I think it's going to probably open up more opportunity in terms of supply chain redesign uh, going forward as well because the risks continue to be there in terms of diverse supply chains and looking again for those sto stable locations where companies can be certain that their supply chain is secure. Much of the focus remains on the appalling death toll in Gaza. The Saudi foreign minister said his country could recognize Israel if the Palestinian question were resolved. We need to have a ceasefire immediately. We need to set the ground for a credible uh, process that enables the Palestinian Authority, that allows us to have uh, a process towards uh, a peace in the region. This will resolve many of the challenges that we have in the region. Ukraine's president, desperate to keep the spotlight on Russia's invasion, held meetings with the U.S. Secretary of State, as well as the head of NATO and the European Commission, who said Russia had failed militarily. Russia's failure is also economic. Sanctions have decoupled its economy from modern technology and innovation. Russia is now dependent on China. President Zelensky warned the West shouldn't depend on Vladimir Putin to bring about an end to the conflict. Putin embodies war. We all know that he is the sole reason why various wars and conflicts persist and why all attempts to restore peace have failed and he will not change. He will not change. Senior figures have been responding almost in real time to geopolitical crises elsewhere. The organizers hope that delegations are at least talking to each other and trying to find solutions. Tony Connolly, RTE News, Davos. Chinese Premier Li Chang has arrived in Ireland this evening for a short visit. Premier Li was welcomed at Dublin Airport by Minister for the Environment Eamon Ryan. Mr Li Chang is due to hold a meeting with Taoiseach Leo Varadkar tomorrow. The two leaders are expected to discuss global issues, bilateral issues and EU-China relations. There's been mixed reaction in Cork to a proposal to rename Parky Chuyve under a new sponsorship agreement. The naming rights deal for the stadium, which is €30 million Euro in debt, is being presented to Cork County Board delegates this evening. In a statement tonight, the County Board said nothing had been finalised, but it's conscious of the public debate. Outside Parky Creeve tonight, the all-weather pitch was busy as usual, with a challenge match between UCC and Cork under-20 hurlers. Meanwhile, club delegates from around the county were gathering and entering the stadium to discuss the 10-year multi-million euro deal that has hit a controversial note. Essentially, the name change from Parky Creeve to Super Value Park. 
The delegates that spoke to RT News on their way into the meeting were consistent in their view. Super value park Kiev, I think it's acceptable to most delegates, I would think, personally. And, and, and do you think you'll get a, a lot of people in favour of that? I'd hope so, yeah. Super value park to me doesn't sound exciting, let's put it that way. Well, from my club, Glen Rovers, we want uh, the name Parky Kiev retained. We have no issue with the, the board seeking naming rights, but we feel that Parky Kiev should be retained in it. Parky Kiev. Super value Parky Kiev. Would you be willing to vote for that? I would, yeah. Yeah, but there's a lot of concern about it. Quite a lot of people ringing me because uh, Parky Cueve is serving us with Park. He's done an awful lot for the GA. Yeah, served us, built up the clubs, built up the organisation, and we think an awful lot of it. Earlier today, the Thornish and Michal Martin expressed his feelings on the proposal on social media, saying he was disappointed and annoyed with the idea to change the name, highlighting its historical significance. In court today, the people seem to share the same view. Personally, I like the name Parky Keeve, you know, it's traditional. I wouldn't be in favour if it was, I suppose, money talks. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> Cork Soul Ireland winning hurling captain from 1990, Tomás Mulcahy, was aware that funding was needed, but hoping a resolution to the naming of the stadium could be found. Yeah, we would love at some stage maybe that Parky Keeve could be retained in some capacity, but we've also got to understand, and I understand, it's 2024. If a commercial decision, we might have another choice. Meanwhile, tonight, the Cork County Board meeting continues at Parky Creek. So that meeting continues um, then, Marty. Do we know which way the wind is blowing on this proposal at all? We don't, to be honest with you, Sharon, because uh, the Cork GA have issued a statement, as you said, in the introduction to my report. And I'll just give you a brief outline. Cork GA can confirm that it is in discussions with SuperValue regarding the naming rights for Parky Creeve. While no matter had been finalised prior to the meeting of delegates to the County Board on uh, this Tuesday evening, both sides have been conscious of the public debate that followed recent speculation in the media. In other words, uh, I think they have both decided, both SuperValue and the Cork GA, to continue on negotiations, continue on discussions, listening to what has been happening in Cork and indeed nationwide today to the reaction to the naming, the, su the suggested naming of Parky Creeve. So I think right now while the debate continues upstairs, no discussion or no decision will be made uh, tonight and discussions will continue between the two parties. Marty, thank you. Finally tonight, eight-time All-Ireland winner Dean Rock has announced his retirement from inter-county football. It brings down the curtain on a 12-year career with the Dubs. Hits it. Goal for Dublin. Dean Rock began his Dublin inter-county career in 2012 when he was handed a league debut by the then Dublin manager Pat Gilroy. A year later, under the stewardship of Jim Gavin, the Ballymun Kickham's starlet won his first All-Ireland title. By 2015, Rock had become a vital cog of the dubs machine. With ice in his veins on free-kicking duty, he famously kicked the winning point in the 2017 All-Ireland Final during the six-in-a-row run from 2015 to 2020. Yeah, look, as I said, I've been very fortunate to have won eight All-Ireland Senior Football Championships and it's something that when you start off your career, if you win one, you know, you, you're, you're, you're extremely happy. But to win eight um, and to play alongside some of the best players who've ever played the game is, is certainly something that, you know, it, it's incredible. It's something that you've, you aspire to do as a kid. In a statement released by Dublin GAA on Rock's behalf today, he paid tribute to his family, a Gaelic Games dynasty in itself. Among them, his dad Barney and his wife Niamh, both All-Ireland winners and All-Star footballers in their own right. Rock thanked all his underage coaches in Ballymun and said he looked forward to supporting the club in developing the next generation of footballers. Perhaps one Sadie Rock among them. Ivani Cullen, RTE News. And that concludes Tuesday's main evening news. Prime time is next. For now, from all the team, good night. Take care.